anniversary. We have a big old sheet cake that we're bringing as well. Everyone just come. We have a great party. Six o'clock time. You say, is church meant to be a party? You better believe it, buddy. We're celebrating God. Celebrating who he is. And Jesus Christ is his son. Let me ask you something. Did the people in Acts eat at all? Woo! They ate almost every day together, the Bible says. So let's get fed. Anyway. <laughs> speaking of Earl, the message again this morning is why my reputation matters. Okay? Why my reputation matters. All right? We talk about black lives matter. I'm going to tell you something. Black lives do matter. And I get sick and tired of this idea that somehow that's not an issue. It is an issue. My friends, when someone's hurting, and in our society right now, blacks are hurting, we need to love on them, Amen. not be, you know, and I understand all the politics. Let's just set all the politics aside for a minute Amen. love on people. Can we do that? Amen. I want to do that. You want to love on people? Say amen. Hey. Let's do that. Let's love on people. I understand all lives matter. They understand it too, but we're singling them out right now because they're suffering. Exactly. And so let's just be in prayer for them. And understand this. My reputation matters too. My reputation matters. Okay, so let's be pray, praying about all that. Better for business card. How many of you here for the first time on a Sunday morning? Let me see. Good to see you, Charlie. God bless you guys, Gail. God bless you, Miss Jeannie. What is your name? Patricia Messenger. Patricia and? Well, God bless you guys, man. Make sure that, hey, guys, come on down with business cards. You got some good. That's the man. Got things. Boy, this is great. It's exciting watching this. See, and our ushers are on the ball, man. They're coming down with visitors' cards right now. You grab that card and put it in the offering plate, if you will. Okay? What do we do with bulletins, Brother Garrett? I mean, do, do, do people, should people read a bulletin? Sure. Why? I've got all the information you need. Yeah. Plus, it's got the plan of salvation. It does. Hey, listen, get that out to people that need to be saved. Get the plan of salvation out to folks, okay? What do we do on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock? We Oh, man. I got one. I, and you know, this time, this week, I'm letting Gary do all the street preaching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up to Doug to Doug. Gary Hale preaches. My son is getting ready to. I know Gary's done it before. How many times have you done that? Probably several, right? In fact, I'm going to be praying that you'll be there. Where do we do it? Anybody know? Seaford City Hall, right in front of Seaford City Hall. You know what I'm seeing? Great responses. Jeannie, did you come to street preaching? Are you getting baptized this morning? Let me ask you something. That's not something beautiful. Hey. Praise the Lord. Jeannie got saved yesterday. Praise the Lord. She's here. She's going to get baptized this morning. Hey, Brother uh, Charlie, you going to get baptized? Yes. Hey, Amen, brother. Hey. Praise the Lord, Brother Charlie. Listen, my friends. Getting the gospel out is not a joke. That's right. And seeing people come from darkness to light, I'm telling you, it happens like that when you're obedient. Now, I don't care what people think about me out there preaching on the street. I know a lot of people don't like it. I don't care. I'm not interested in that. You know who does love it? Jesus, Jesus did it. Amen. Jesus did it. He loves it. Jeremiah did it. Gary did it. <laughs> All right. Hey, let me give you this, and then we're done. All right? Uh, breakfast was tremendous today. We had about 50 people for breakfast. Keep on coming for breakfast. Let's get more people into breakfast. Jesse, Robin, Susan, and Marion are the first Sunday. At every first Sunday, they're going to be making breakfast. Would somebody else join them in making breakfast at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning? Anybody? Okay, excellent. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea. Second Sunday of the month. Anyone who would commit to do the second Sunday of the month? Anybody else besides these? Amy, Michaela, Paula, Jesse, and Bart. All right, the second Sunday. Anybody else? I see you looking. People are thinking. Anybody? Make a commitment. Come on, the Lord will love you for it. <laughs> you know, he enjoys commitment. He does. That's why he causes us to commit to him. You know. So you think about it, pray about it, and talk to me later. Third Sunday. Anybody else? Third Sunday. How about the fourth Sunday? Anybody? Okay, listen. We got about 25 people that are making breakfast during the week, but we want to make sure during the month we want to make sure you get in there too. Okay, 10 o'clock fellowship and encouragement classes. Dad, how was your class today? Wonderful. Did you have a good group? No way. What? Wow. Ours was pretty packed too, wasn't it, Peggy? It was pretty good, Jeannie, wasn't it? Did you enjoy that class, Brother Lou? Where are you at? We had a good time, didn't we, Brother Everline? Man, that was tremendous. 
I'm missing some of you at PSCTC on Sunday, uh, every day. Pastor Sears coffee time chat is at what time every morning? 7.15. And on the weekends, what time? 8.30. That's right. So at 8.30 on weekends, man, look at it, if you will. It's always on there. And then July the 18th at 12 o'clock, the ladies' lunch. Are you going to the ladies' lunch? Mm. <laughs> you going to go to the couples thing? Maybe July the 18th? You guys going to the couples thing? Put your hand up. If you say, I'm going to the couples thing, July the 18th. And how about July the 25th? Who's maintenance day? Maintenance day? Let me see. Ooh, good. Fantastic. July the 26th. Uh, we, we're going to start. And did we already do the sign-ups for the Christmas? We did. Okay, excellent. Listen, there's a sign-up on the back table, is it? Is it on the back table? You can sign up to bring gift gifts. We want to exchange gifts with everybody. I'm going down to buy a bunch of gifts. I'm going to buy like 50 gifts, all right? They're going to be a dollar a piece. So I'm going to do like 50 <laughs> gifts. <laughs> going down to Dollar Tree, all right? Anyway, you come and bring gifts and we'll exchange it. All right, that's okay. July, Christmas in July. Anything that is exciting is exciting. Tell me if that's not cool. We're going to have some hot chocolate. We're going to have ugly sweater contest, bro. We bring your ugly sweater contest. Yes, sir. All right, good. August the 9th, August, pardon me, the first men's prayer breakfast, August the 9th, the children's exciting times coming up also. There are some announcements with reference to people who are suffering. I want you to talk to me. Jesse, we'll get people talking about Sandy Cox, Landis, and others later on, okay? Because certainly we want to make sure that we take the time to do what the Lord wants us to do and worship today. But right now, Jeannie, why don't you come up here? We're going to baptize you and put you in the pool. All right, Charlie, we may do you afterwards, I guess. Are you ready to go right now or not? Um, whenever yeah. you're ready. Are you, are you changed? Yes. Come on, then, man. Okay. Let's That's put you in that tub, tub man. Right. Let's put you in that tub. Hey, I got a couple of guys that will help me out. You got a couple of guys that will help me out? Come on up here, Brother Ryan. I know you will. Come on, buddy. Now, why do we do this? Because it's a command. It's the first command, isn't it? It's the first command after you're saved. You say, but I help out in church. Well, that's not the first command. You say, well, I go out and witness. Well, that's not the first command. What's the first command that you're supposed to do after you get saved? Be baptized. Baptized. Why is that? So you can show everyone a physical representation of the spiritual thing that happened in your heart. He wants everyone to see you. Go under the water and come up out of the water because he wants everyone to see that you died to yourself and that Jesus Christ raised you to new life. You've given yourself over to him. You've allowed him to take over your life. It is a step of obedience. It's the first step of obedience. obedience. Okay, and yes, it is a step of faith, but faith is obedience. The word of God tells us in John chapter 14 that those that love him, anyone that will love him, will keep his commandments. commandments. That's right. Come on in, Gene. We'll get you going here. Yeah. Do you mind taking off your shoes, honey? Okay. Do you need us to lift you up, or can you do it on your own? Okay, you do it on your own. That's right. Okay. Yeah. We got it. We got it. Well, I'm proud of you for doing this, man. You are a trooper. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Can you get that one foot over? There you go. Good. Good. Excellent. There you go. <laughs> now you know, everybody. He said, man, if I get back, I'm going to this goosey pool. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's a nice goosey. Oh, we're to put that in here, sure we? Yeah. That'd be great. For the bottom part is going. Don't tell nobody, Gene. Yeah. But we're just going to sit down right there, and then you're going to turn your feet around this way. Can you do that? And we're just going to lay you back. All right? It's the simplest thing in all the world. Gene, have you received Christ as your personal Savior? And you are sure that Christ has cleansed you from your sin? Did we do that over the phone together, my dear sister? We did. And I heard the emotion of her. Love that you have for the Lord. God, according to Jeannie's profession of faith and what you've asked me to do, I now baptize Jeannie in the name of the Father and of the Son.
and of the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death. Praise the likeness of his death.
end of that one. That, that's perfect with this. Let's sing it together. Sing out. Here was this go. You ready? Shall I take from your hand your blessings? Yet not welcome any pain. Shall I thank you for days of sunshine? Yet crumble in days of rain. Shall I love you in times of plenty? Then leave you in days. Shall I trust when I reap a harvest, but when winter winds blow and doubt, oh, let your will be done in me, in your love I will abide, oh, I Thank you. 
she's asking about missionaries. We have, you know, we have more than 30 of missionaries. Amen. And we really need to be praying for them. One of our missionaries are the Gideons. And we're going to have Brother Tim come now. I want you to listen close as he talks with you about the needs among the people around the world with reference to the scriptures. You know, without the Bible, there isn't an awful lot that can be done. Do you know that? That's right. So you keep praying for him, pray for their ministry, pray that they're able to place Bibles everywhere. Brother Tim, go right for it, brother. Amen. I have a slide presentation for you today, but we don't have any electronic remotes, so I'm going to have to give hand signals to my good staff up there in the back. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yeah, amen. In Revelation 19, we see that His name is the Word of God, and that is Jesus Christ. So what the Gideons do, if you look at the bulletin you receive, is we share God's Word, means we share Jesus Christ, the beloved and dying yes, Word. There was an eight-year-old little girl in a Sunday school class, and the teacher said, why do you think they call it the Word of God instead of the Word? Why is it plural? Why is it the Word of God? And as only the youth can do, she says, because Jesus says it all. Amen. 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 So who are the Gideons? I think I should stand over here so I can see where we're at. <laughs> okay, our mission is only to win the loss to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good. Next. We're an association of businessmen, professional men that are members of evangelical churches just like this one. Amen. And our wives joined with us in the auxiliary. And right now we're organized in over 200 countries. Lord. Wow. The Bible is printed in 100 different languages. And last year we distributed 82 million scriptures throughout the world. And also Lord. churches just like yours. Yes. Yeah. Recently, we went down to Laurel Ministerial at a food giveaway during our shutdown with Mountaineer Chicken. And as you can see here, they lined up over at the, uh, the high school. There was a line, and everybody would stop at different stations next. And the Gideons were there giving out copies of God's Word to all of the people that came through. Because even though they needed food for their stomachs, they needed food for their souls. Next. And even one of the men in this room today, Lou Everline, came out and was giving up scriptures as well. We had to move Lou alone because he always wanted to tell the whole gospel to every person. In this Amen. Next. But we hand out the testaments and copies of God's word and we do it one by one, face to face. And hopefully when we have the opportunity, we can share Jesus. Next. I asked about if you still had missionaries in Ecuador, because I went to Ecuador for two weeks with the Gideons. Here you can see I was allowed to, to speak at the entire high school assembly. In Ecuador, they, they let you go into classrooms, desk to desk, room to room. They call them in assembly. And if you look at these boys and girls, they're looking at the copy of God's word that they all received as I shared it with them. In the United States of America, not only can we go into the rooms, we can't even stand on the sidewalks because the school owns the sidewalks. So pray for that. We know that you are, but the Lord is on the front. Next. I told you 82 million scriptures. If you listen to your heartbeat, Every day is two scriptures, two copies of God's word is going out throughout this world through the giving organization. And you don't even know it because it won't be on the news. But your support is what's doing this. Next. We go into the hotels and motels are probably most, most well known for that. But did you know that as of this year, the hotel distributions that we do is only about 10% of what the Gideons do. Oh, my. We're interested in the schools. Just leave it there for a second. The children in schools today not only don't know Jesus, some of them don't even know who God is. That's right. Yeah. This is the second generation of, of God's word being taken out of school, of prayer being taken out of school. Mm -hmm. I've been on distributions, and I, I talked to a young man, and he literally had never heard the name Jesus. 
and he was about 12 years old. In Maryland, two years ago, they passed a ruling that the Gideons can go into the schools with the Bible in Maryland. They cannot proselytize, they cannot share the gospel, but they're allowed to make the testaments available to every school child, fifth grade and up. We need to do that in Delaware. Amen. I met with the school board in Woodbridge. The school board did an investigation, and it is not against the law. There's no law that says the Bible can't be in Delaware schools. Amen. So I'm here today as my main topic is to pray that these doors open in the Delaware schools. We have to go through the school boards. Every district makes their own policy. There's no statewide policy. If you know anybody on any school board, please see me later today and give me your information. Very good. Because we need the church involved in this. A Gideon walking up to the school board is not going to mean anything. No. But if I've got pastors and congregants coming with me, we may get the schools open. So great. Can, That's great. Uh, God's word. Yes. Next. <coughs> Have any of you got this Bible app on your phone? Does that look familiar? Oh, yeah. It's called the New Version. I see many hands standing up. Yeah. Well, the man that created this New Version came to the Lord in college through a Gideon Testament. Yeah. And here's his video right now. Hey, Reverend wow. Shell and Greg. Greg's not here today. He's on video. Hi, my name is Craig Rochelle. I'm the pastor of LifeChurch.tv, and so much of what I'm doing today is a result of how God used the Gideons to get God's Word into my hand to transform my life. When I was in college, my fraternity got in a lot of trouble. I was the ringleader in many ways of the trouble, and so as a PR move, even as a non-Christian, I decided to start a Bible study. The only problem was I didn't own a Bible. And the day that we were scheduled to have a Bible study, I was walking from one class to another when a gentleman, a Gideon, offered me a free green New Testament Bible. Amen. I can remember distinctly thinking, well, if there is a God, he must have just worked through that guy. And sure enough, through the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, I read that you're saved by grace through faith. Hey. Yeah. is the gift of God so no one can boast. Right. And that's when spiritually I was born anew, forgiven of all my sins by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. To all those who serve in the Gideons, thank you for investing in me. For all those who are investing in the Gideons, thank you for making a difference in thousands and thousands of stories just like mine. The living word is active, powerful. Thank you. Just the next slide. Right after that. Okay, we don't need it. Greg, Greg developed that, that app that I showed you. But then because he came to the Lord through the Gideons, he has created a special Gideon Bible app that's now available to anybody that wants one. And this Bible app comes in 1,100 different languages, and it talks to you and everything else. So we thank you for your support. Amen. We ask that you would pray for us. We need open doors. We need men and women to become part of the Gideons. And if you want to be a friend of the Gideon, you can see me later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give them a good job. and all of that with the music today. I want to just say to everybody, you may have come to enjoy a little bit more of the worship music. Tonight, you'll get that. You'll get the choir as well. You'll get a lot of great things related to that interpersonal work through worship. Because we do together worship, right? But I got to tell you something. Part of the things about First Baptist Church that might be different from some churches is that we focus on the Word of God. Amen. We believe the Word of God needs to be the centerpiece of everything. And because we have the Gideons, because we have Baptists, because we have some extra things today, other things that announce that we usually don't, 
we really got to get into the Word. Don't you think so? Amen. I think you should. So why don't you grab your Bible? You can go with me if you will. Brother Gary, thank you so much, man, for your part of this. Such a good brother. Appreciate him. Proverbs, if you will. Proverbs. And you're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 12 today. Proverbs. And as promised, what do people think about you? What do people think about you? What do people know about you? Does it matter? You know, the tough guys out there, sometimes you may have come out of your mouth. I've said it before, actually. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. <laughs> and yet, you know what? I don't know that that's exactly true. I do care. And sometimes I'll pull back after being a little brash about something and think, ah, maybe I should have said that in a different way. Maybe I should have said that in a way that's a little bit more uh, acceptable, you know. Does it matter? Does it matter how you act with people? Does it matter what you say? Does it matter what your reputation is in this earth? Amen. Let me ask you, do you think that your reputation is important? Amen. How is the reputation in your career field? What I'm talking about is your job, your home, your wife. <laughs> what does your wife think of your reputation? <clears throat> Honey, maybe you could be a little bit quieter. <laughs> maybe you could be a little bit more, you know, I don't know. Or guys, man, a sweetheart, you know, it, it, maybe we could have said that in a different way, you know. Have you ever had that happen to you? Slip your hand if that's you. Okay, very good. The very few of you that are with me on that. All right. Boy, I'll tell you, I've had that problem so often. Looking at Proverbs 22, if you will, for just a minute, before you get into Proverbs 12, you'll see in Proverbs 22 and verse 1, I'd like you to read it out loud with me, if you will. Proverbs 22 and verse 1. It's up on the screen if you haven't been able to find it. It says this. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and a loving favor than silver and gold. Brian, I care about what you think. You know that? You know why? Because I love you. You know that? I care about what you think about me, and I care, Brother Ken, about what you think about me. Now, what we ought to all be more concerned with than anything is what God thinks of us Amen. and how we think of Him. Yeah. That should be the number one thing, but the fact is, everybody thinks they're important. How many of you don't think you're important? <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys are liars. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. And I do that too. I want to pull back. I really believe that about myself. I don't care what people think about me in that respect. But the fact is, we do. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being concerned about how you look in your reputation. Look with me at Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1. Read that one out loud too before we get into our main text. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. Can you read that with me, Dennis? You guys in the back all the way to the front. Those are in the cars. Get your Bibles out, you guys that are in your cars. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. Read it out. Everybody together. A good, good name is better than, than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Three reasons a good name is better than wealth are stability, eternity, and favor. Stability, eternity, and favor. Genie, listen. If you're a stable person, your name is going to be important to people. Because they're going to know, I can trust Genie. I can trust Bill. I can trust. Mike, I can trust, Kathy, stability, okay? And then eternity. People will look to you and say, well, look, now that person seems to be thinking past his death. He's thinking, I've got someone to answer to more important than you. And so I'm going to treat you with such respect that that person is honored as well. Who is that person? The Lord himself. Romans chapter 3 and verse 4 and Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. You don't have to put those up, sweetheart, but wrote Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 4. Luke, Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Speak of favor, the favor of men. You know what Jesus Christ did? He grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He grew in favor with who? God and man. So I'm going to briefly go through in about seven minutes. 14 verses. In seven minutes, I'm going to go through 14 verses. We're going to start in Proverbs chapter 12. Are you ready for this, Brother Kmart? Because, yeah. man, you know what? 
your reputation is about to go through the roof this morning. You know what I'm saying? How many of you want your reputation to be better this morning? Amen. Woo! Say amen! Amen! amen. Uh, I just did that because I told you to. Anyway, <laughs> Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 1, start with this. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. You know what everyone loves? Someone who is easily corrected. Everyone loves someone who is easily correct. And when somebody comes to you and says, ah, that's not exactly right, and you say, oh, well, you might be right about that. You know what that does for you? It puts your reputation through the roof. But when you say, no, man, I don't agree. You're just, you, you can believe whatever you want. I don't get, you know what they're going to do, Rick? They're not going to feel so good about you as they did at the start. Because once you start to get to know someone and they're easily corrected and they say, you know, I hadn't really thought much about it the way you're thinking about it. Boy, that's a whole other ballgame. Tell me if that's not the case. So look at that verse again. Look at it very closely. She's got it up on the wall. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. So somebody comes to instruct you, what do you do? Let him instruct you. Look at verse 2. A good man obtains favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices... Well, he can never. Everybody knows what a device is, right? How many of you got a device? Yeah. You got your devices with you this morning? <laughs> I hope they're not evil devices, okay? Uh, unfortunately, I think every cell phone is an evil device, okay? Uh, I think maybe our, uh, our devices of all kinds, computers and, and laptops and all this and that, are just devices that get us into trouble sometimes. Hey, be careful not to be a person of evil devices. Okay, so first of all, be corrected, but then be godly, okay? Yeah. Be godly. People love godly people. People who don't love godliness can at least respect godly people. Have you noticed that? Yeah. They at least respect godly people. There's a person uh, the, uh, that, that's the head of the Seaford Blades Talk Group on Facebook, Nancy Hall. She's probably watching or may watch later when she finds out her name is being mentioned here. But... Uh, Nancy is not necessarily of the same bent that I am in any way, in any sphere. And yet she and I get along on Facebook. Why? Because we want to. We respect each other. And she doesn't necessarily understand my understanding of what the scripture says about the LGBTQ community in Romans chapter 1. But she respects it. And she told me so yesterday. She respects the way we handle it. Why? Because she knows that we talk about us all being sinners. Everyone's got a problem. Every individual's got problems all over the place. And what do we need to do? We need to realize we're sinners just like everybody else is a sinner and not be putting someone down in a hole when we all know that we're all on equal footing at the foot of the cross. Every single one of us are sinners that need Christ. You yeah, understand? Right. So we don't look at anybody else and say, well, they've got bigger problems than I do. God help you. God help you. That's how you're thinking. That's right. God help me. I'll tell you what. Godliness and being correct is boy, People will love you for that. Look at verse 3, if you will. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. You know what this is? Listen close. You ready? Being corrected, people will love you for it. Being godly, people will love you for it. Being stable, yeah. people will love you for it. Yes. I can rely on that guy. When he says that he's going to do something, guess what he does? That's what he does. Amen. Man, that Bob Ward, he told me this. You know what? Bob does it. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. I work with an individual here at church that I know he, he's already embarrassed because I told him at breakfast I was going to talk about him. But I enjoy Brother Earl Tower. I enjoy him because of his civility. <laughs> I enjoy being able to come to him and say, can we get this done? And two minutes later, he's done. Hmm. I like that. You know why? Because what he says in general, he does. Now, is he forgetful? Well, every once in a while, he forgets something. All right? Every once in a while, he forgets something. But mainly, it's because I didn't do my job. All right? And the fact is, stability comes because we make a concerted effort to be stable. Are you doing that? Verse 4 and number 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh a shame is as rottenness in his bones. Now, I know that all the men here 
here saying, how do I be a virtuous woman, right? How do I be a virtuous woman? This verse is not just speaking to women, it's just speaking in unity terms all the way around. Tom, are you unified with Kim? I know they are. They're a unified team, aren't you, Kim? You see, those kinds of groups are people, those husbands, wives, families who are unified, are an example to the world, and people will love you for it. They like unity. They don't like it when you're going around trying to cause division. Should we try to cause division? No. Now listen. Is the word of God going to divide? Yes. Yes, it is. Jesus Christ said, I came not into this world to bring peace, but to bring a sword. And oftentimes, the word of God is going to divide. Now, does Jesus Christ want everybody to be divided? No. no. His goal is for everyone to come into the knowledge of the truth, to be brought unto true understanding of the word. But is that always going to happen? No. But people will see your concerted effort to be unified, and they'll respect you for it. Even though they might not agree with you, they'll respect you for it. Look at verse 5, if you will. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Your thought life is important. Do you know that? And this is speaking of thought life. The thoughts of the righteous are right. So what are you into? Do you have a pornographic mind? My friends, I'm not just talking about perversity on the internet. I'm talking about pornography, porn in any way, which basically is destructive. It's something that is perverse. Are you a person that is pure of mind? People love purity of mind. They may not be pure themselves, but they love looking at someone else and saying, wow, I wish my mind was a little straighter. Do you know that that's the case? Look at verse 6, if you will. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. You know what this is all about, dear ones? It is your whole life, your mouth itself, the things that come out of your mouth. Look at verse 7. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. How is your home life, dear ones? How is your home life? My friends, make certain that your home life is a pure life, a righteous life, a life that is set for the defense of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. People want to know, even though they may not agree with you about Jesus Christ, they want to know that you really believe what you believe. I had a gentleman here in our church come through. He watched for a few services, came and sat and listened, took me out one time to a restaurant, talked with me, and he said these words. You really believe it, don't you? I said, believe what? He said, all that stuff you get up there and preach, you really believe it, don't you? I said, my friend, God's word is true whether I believe it or not. You need to believe it too. And I said, yes, of course it is. It's ingrained into the fiber of every Christian who is truly saved. Yes, it's real for them. Yes, there's no fooling around. No, it's not some kind of religion to them. It is a full-on relationship with Jesus Christ that saved the soul. And that individual sat back and looked at me like this and he said, you are really weird. He said, <laughs> and I remember that, you know, he was just joking. But every joke has a half-truth to it. Mm -hmm. And yet that man, to this day, I just talked with him yesterday. He respects me. I respect him. God is so good to bring that kind of respect. When what? You're easily corrected. When what? You're God. When what? You're stable. When what? You're unified with others. When what? Your thought life is a real, pure life. When what? When your home life. It's a real, pure, sincere life. Listen to me now. Look up here and look at me. Look real good. You guys that are in the cars out there, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> if you're somebody different at home than you are here, get right with God. Amen. It's true. If you're someone different at home than you are at work, get right with God. I've heard wives testify to my wife and I that their husband is more kind to his clients than he is to his wife. Mm -hmm. Is that you? It's not good. <coughs> I've got to be up front with you, and I will. Barbara knows the first few years of my marriage, I was a jerk. I had the 
get right with God. And now I'm less of a jerk. <laughs> okay. Am I less of a jerk? <laughs> God has worked in my heart. You know, I tell you, I was a pastor back then. I was still a jerk, Gary. You know? I don't care what you think about me. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, verse eight. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. Are you pure? Is purity a part of your fiber? I'm talking about personal purity. Not just home life. Not just thought life. But personal purity. Are you cheating on your wife? In some way. Young people, are you sexually active when you know that's not right to be? God has made it clear, very clear, that fornication <clears throat> is any kind of relationship in an intimate setting outside of marriage. Period. Don't do it. Be pure until the day you're married, and then once you're married, be pure still. My friends, I'm going to tell you something. It's legal when you're married <laughs> and enjoyable. And there's nothing wrong with it. I even know of people whose wives feel like uh, that, that intimacy is only for reproduction. That's nonsense. That is not what the Bible teaches. You go through Song of Solomon and you'll learn some things, okay? You and your wife can study Song of Solomon and your women think that way, your men think that way. Don't think that way. Activity that is intimate is good and right and pure when it's in the confines of marriage. Do it! And do what God would have you to do in the right way. Look at verse 9, if you will. He that is despised and hath the servants is better than he that honoreth himself and lack of bread. Now, a lot of people read that wrong. And actually, in the English, it is hard to understand, but it actually means a person with a heart of servitude. That's what it means. He that hath a servant means a person with a heart of servitude. Not that he's going around and he got a bunch of slaves. No, that's not what it says here. A person with a heart of servitude. In other words, he hath a servant. He hath a servant's heart. He is willing to work with those that are, quote unquote, less fortunate than himself. All right? Do you have a heart of servitude? You know what? It'll make you loved. It'll make you loved if you're one of those that helps out the guy with a cardboard sign on the side of the road rather than despising him because you don't know if he has the wherewithal to work. Listen, if you don't know if his mental wherewithal is where it ought to be, leave it there and help the guy anyway, okay? Do what we ought to do to be a help to those that are around us. If you need to do some investigation, do it. You don't want to hurt somebody by giving them something for them to go and get some substance abuse. But at the same time, have you even talked with him? Have you taken the time to stop? Park the car for a minute. You know what I noticed yesterday, Dad? I went all over the place shopping with my kids, just goofing off. And we got to the dollar store. We weren't busy. Or where were we at all? Liz? Where were we? Just goofing off, doing, just having a nice time, Mark and Liz and myself. I'm just getting a Coke here and there, a bag of chips there and here. And I did, I did stay within the fine confines of my diet. Uh, yes, I did. But anyway, <laughs> not in the fatty part, but in the wrong part. In any case, my friends, we came to a point. <laughs> Brother Conrad, I came to a point where I'm standing in the line, the Dollar General. And there's like six or eight people in front of me. I'm like, <sighs> and I look at Liz and we're like, why are we all of a sudden anxious? We're not going anywhere. You know? Tell me if you don't do that too. You know what I'm saying? We're not really busy, but I'm in line now. So hey, let's pick it up here. You know what I'm saying? He that is despised and hath to serve, be a servant. A, a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Even the very tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So let me ask you this. Is it okay to treat animals with respect? Is that okay to do that? Should we do that? My friend, animal treatment is a part of the respect that you'll find from other human beings. You want to love on people, love on your dog. You want to love on people, love on your cat. Let them be like, you know, training for how you treat other people. You see, a lot of people have this in reverse. Because I'll see this on the internet. People will say, I'd much rather spend time with my dog than any human being. Oh, 
come on now. No, 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 no. You know, the humans are the crown of God's creation. Right? Amen. So learn to get along with them, but use your dog as practice. Okay? That's how it works. <laughs> Number 11. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Be diligent. People love hard-working folks. 2 Samuel chapter 8 talks about how David started out his kingdom working, 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 making everything to be what it ought to be. Man, I've got this garden that people say looks like it's from the Jurassic period. People come over and care and say, how big, how, big are your, uh, how big are those squash plants you have? I said, about as big as my Mazda, all right? It's amazing how big that jump is. This isn't the game. It's huge, incredible. But listen, that didn't happen by accident. Do you understand? So be diligent in your work. And you know what? My neighbors come over and they say, How did you do that? And I say, Buddy poop. But <laughs> besides that, a lot of diligent labor. You know what I'm saying? Verse 12. The wicked desires the net of evil men, but the roots of the righteous yield the fruit. Honesty. You know what? People enjoy honest folks. If every time you turn around, Brian, you're looking at me and saying, did he just tell me the truth? <laughs> We're not going to be very trustworthy of each other. You know, you've got to be an honest person. People love that. Verse 14. Uh, find it. Look at 13, 14. The, the wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. But the just shall come out of trouble, his speech. Number 14, a man shall be satisfied with the good. The good is good by the fruit of his mouth. The recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered by his hands. Production. Production. Having things actually take root. Yeah. I want to end with just this thought today. Have you ever looked through the Bible and thought to yourself, how many thousands of things does God expect of me? There's no way I can do all of this. And you know what? If you look up here and just listen real quick, after all of these 14 things we just mentioned, you are right. You can't. It's impossible for human beings to be good in any way, shape, or form. That's right. Can I tell you this? Jesus Christ was good already for you. And our Lord and Savior Jesus died for the purpose of human beings who are fallible and wrong to come unto him and have their sins forgiven. Romans chapter 3 tells us all the sin and come short of the glory of God. But Romans 6 and verse 23 says that the wages of that sin is death, but the gift. The wages of now, by payment for that sin is death, but the gift. The gift, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our brother on video in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now we could go. Through all those 14 things I just mentioned, Rick, Rick go with a fine tooth comb and work those things out to where we're doing things exactly right. Everything's perfect, and everybody likes me now. Or I can turn to Jesus Christ and say, I'm a disaster, God. Yeah. I don't know how to do any of this. Lord, every time I turn around, I'm hurting someone. My wife goes to church, goes to work. Oh, God, help me. And honestly and humbly come before our God and say, Oh, Lord, you alone must save me. You must make me worthy. You must give me favor. You must justify me. You know the beauty about our God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 tells us this. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While I was still dirty and disgusting and doing things wrong, Christ died for me. No, you're not going to be perfect. You can go through those things and try, and you'll fall flat on your face. Say, well, why is it preaching then, Pastor? It's because every individual who knows Jesus Christ and interacts with him is a new creature in him. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 16 and 17, affirm that he can exercise his fruit through you and make you something you never thought you could be. That's why I preach it. But if we do it in our own strength, if we think somehow that by force, that we're going to get anywhere with God. We're failing. We're failing. The other day I was sitting in my easy chair and my dog came up to me. And she did this thing. She put her, her head right on my knee. You ever have, how many of you got a dog? She put her head up on my knee and she went like this. Just 
stare at me like that. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I stared back. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what happened? She started going. <laughs> <laughs> I know what she wanted. She wanted to get up in my lap. Do you know every time you need your God, all you've got to do is look right at him. He'll stare back and he'll scare you to death. But he'll also say this, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Would you bow your head and close your eyes this morning? You say, Pastor, I'd like to be better. I'd like to do right. I'd like to have a better relationship with my wife and my friends and those around me. I want my reputation to be solid and clean. How do I get that, Pastor? Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ alone. Make Jesus Christ the center of your life. Go to Jesus Christ. The Word of God says He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by Him. And if today you desire to be something better than you are in any way, shape, or form, yield your heart to Jesus and let Him cleanse you completely. He died on the cross in your place for this reason. The Bible tells us it was a substitutionary death. So that by his sacrifice, you can come to him, lay your heart down and say, oh God, please cleanse me. I'm so dirty. I'm so guilty. God, take away my sin. If that's you today, you say, Pastor, I'd like that. I want my heart to be cleansed. I'd like to start on a path of more purity. Would you pray for me? Slip your hand up if that's you. And yes, 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 yes. I see those hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. In one fashion or another, whether saved or not, we all desire that. Okay. But if you're unsaved here and you say, I don't know how to get started, why don't you do this? Why don't you just walk right down the side? Walk right down the side and talk with some. You got some counselors down here. Brother John is coming. Others are coming. Michael West is coming. You just come. All right? Stand together, everybody. And anyone that wants to come with these folks, come on up here. Come on up here and get it right. Go ahead and deal with it. Good. That's excellent, man. Come on. Yes. Come on down. That's good. Yes. Come on down. Anyone else that would like to come, come forward. Get your heart right with God. Start on that path of that relationship with him. It might be that you're saved. You say, I need to get closer to him. I need to draw near to him. Come on down if that's you. If you say, I haven't been baptized. I need to be baptized. That's for you too. Come on, man. Hey, Mark, come on down. Anybody else? Yes. Come on down if you want to. That's right. Good, good, good. Anyone else would say, I need to be a member of this church. I haven't done that. I haven't made that decision. I love this place. I love it, but I just haven't made my decision to be up there. Make your decision today. He loves commitment. Come on down, if you will. Amy, you want to be a part of the counseling? Come on, if you will. Anyone else? Come, please. There's plenty of counselors, plenty of people to talk with. If you need to get right with God, now is the time, whether saved or if you've never been saved, walk down this aisle and get your decisions made today. Let God work in your heart. If you need to be a baptized individual, just have to take that first step. I need to take that first step. Of obedience. Come on down, if you will. Anybody else? Come on down, if you will. Anybody. Father, I thank you for the day. I praise you for what you're going to do throughout the day. I'm excited about tonight. Give us, dear Lord God, your wisdom as we go now to obey, to honor you, to be all you have us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. When do the festivities start tonight? That's right, 6 o'clock, you come. Say it out loud, 6 o'clock. I'll see you then, man. We're going to have a great time, great worship, great music, great preaching, and an awesome time of fellowship. God bless you.